distant scenery and foliage is typically not rendered using fully modeled geometry with intricate details, but using stand-in or proxy geometry such as imposters. If done right, the visual difference between the stand-in and the actual geometry can be minimal. In this video, we're going to explore how to create billboard imposters with Instalot and show some of the interesting workflows it enables us to do. The first example that we're going to look at is this tree. And this tree, normally when you zoom away from it in a real-time situation, you would swap to lower levels of detail, and also at the very lowest detail, swap to a single card, or maybe two or three cards, uh, with just an alpha channel of this shape and silhouette of the tree from a distance. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So the first thing that we always need to do is make sure that we've set our output. And I already have my output set up to the demo folder. Uh, the naming is already set up as well. I am set it up with uh, 1024 by 1024 with a super sampling of times two. And I could lower this down to none if I wanted a more detailed image for the distance. Uh, if I wanted a softer one, I could do super sampling times two. So we'll start out with none for this time. The other thing we can do is bake out multiple maps, uh, and we also have all of the features for the types of maps that we output. So if we want to output an ambient occlusion, we can do that. We can also output a thickness if we wanted some subsurface scatter. That way we could have some thin, thin areas receive more light and have the light pass through them. So we have the option to uh, bake all of these maps out as well. So the next thing to do, now that we have this all set up, is go ahead and go over to the imposterized tab. Now under this imposterized tab, we have multiple ways that we can create different types of imposters. But we're gonna go for billboard this time. And from here, the next thing I wanna set up is just something simple. So, uh, so we're gonna do a simple X style cross with the billboards and I've already got it set up here by default. So X, Y axis for quads and the next one Y, Z axis for quads. So we're gonna get one quad on X, Y and one quad on Y, Z. Then the checkbox here is two-sided quads. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna render out both the front and back of each of those quads. So let's take a look at how that works. So we've got the object selected, and then we just come over here and hit Imposterize Selected Meshes. So this is gonna create the quads and bake out our textures as well. So what you can see is we have the two, two quads here, and they were baked out front and back. And the way that we're gonna know that is looking at the UVs. By looking at the UVs, we can see that we have both of these set up. We have, uh, instead of just two images, we actually have four. So that's showing that both the front and back of each of those quads are rendered out based on uh, the object. And if we don't want that, if we want to use the same look on both sides, which I think would be appropriate for this tree, we can turn this off, go ahead and hit it again. And this time, our result should be just two single images in our UVs. So here, we've just got the two now and lighting in, in Maya never quite looks right, so uh, we can get a much better look inside of our, our real-time engine. So I'm just gonna change that to flat lighting so we can kind of look at it here. So everything looks good there. And we have other options as well. We can always have more of these. I could pump this up to 16, and what this will do is it will give us quite, a, quite the spiral here of images, each image being uh, a separate render based on the location inside of that tree. So you can see each one of these is different. We have several of them. This could work well for a flipbook type thing. Yeah, that way it changes the image and shows you the quad based on your distance if you really wanted to get uh, detailed with these. Uh, so we have that and we also have XY or XZ and I'll show you the the two-sided quads here. This is a good example using the XZ and so we're going to get a, a horizontal plane right down the middle facing up and down. So we'll hit this, and this is, this one shows pretty well on the two-sided quads uh, what this does. So you can see the top right here of the tree, we can see that we got the top of the render. So if you're coming from the top, you'd see this. And just to show it, we have a bottom as well. So again, it, it renders like like this for the bottom, and we have two images. So we have we have the top and the bottom here. Now that's good for our single individual tree, but what if we wanted to have more? So we have a couple more. Uh, and here we have a whole kind of forest. 
and a whole forest section. And so for, maybe for the distance up on a hill or a mountain or something like that, instead of having individual quads, we could do it for the entire thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this and let's do X, Y, Z, Z, Y. And this will give us a quad of the entire forest here. Let's go ahead and hit imposterize selected meshes. So again, it's doing everything. And again, I have two sided quads checked on. So it's going to give me both a front and a back. So I have the front of the forest and I have the back as a different one. And again, we don't really need both of these, but we can see what they're, what it's doing if we wanted that. And we could use it, you know, we could have two of them and swap them up and have a, a little bit of a different look for each one of them rendered off that same single image. Now, the last thing that I want to show you uh, right here with these trees is using a custom geometry. So what we can do, let's go ahead and move these trees back. Looks like they're offset. Move these trees back here. We can use custom geometry. So going back to InstaLot, we have the billboard, all of these settings uh, there. And so I'm going to go to custom geometry. And now we have the custom geometry and what it's looking for is a, a suffix for underscore imposter. And we already have that set up. So here we have custom underscore imposter. So it's going to look for that. So I can go ahead and select everything. Uh, and here's our simple settings because we're using the imposter here. And it's all going to be based off the normals of this imposter card and the way that this faces. So what you should see is we're going to get a little bit of clipping off the top because this doesn't quite encapsulate the tops of the trees. And I could fix that and scale it up if I need to, but just to show how that's working, I think this is a good example that shows what it's going to capture. If we want to capture more or less of that, we can change our mesh. So if I want to make sure I got the tops of the trees, I can raise this up, select everything again, and this should, this should capture the tops of the trees as well. So we'll have everything in view. There we go. So you can use custom geometry in any way you want. If you've had uh, certain looks or certain formats of the low poly imposters for the background, you could just use this to bake it and use the underscore imposter suffix to specify which mesh you want to be the uh, location of the bake. So all of this geometry gets baked onto these cards and you get your custom imposter. For the last example in this video, I'm going to show you some grass blades and normally you would take some high poly grass blades and uh, bake them down to single cards and then model them out and create a mesh that you could then scatter around on your terrain. So in this example we're going to go ahead and take the high poly meshes here. I'm going to apply a flat color to them and just give them a simple green color so we can have some grass, grass color here. And we're going to bake these down. So going back to InstaLod we have all the naming already set up from previously uh, for our output. And here, what I want to do is we're looking at Y and X right here. So uh, X, Y, I'm going to set to 1, and I'm going to turn off Y to Z. This way, we're just seeing the front here, and we're going to get one quad. Let's go ahead and say, Imposterize Selected Meshes. So very quickly, we get a new mesh here. It looks like it was rendered the other way. And... Uh, pointing the other way and so then we go ahead and look at our UVs and we're all good here So from here we could continue to make a few more of these and uh, Bake them down to new cards, but let's look take a look at a, a couple other things real quick So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this one number Let's go ahead and call it A. And the reason I'm going to do that, I wanted to show you a few of these options here. So we have padding. What padding is going to do is you can see our quad goes right up to our geometry. So there's really no uh, room for error here. And if we were distorting the, the UVs or doing anything there with our shaders and not messing with the mesh at all, if we were having things wave with some uh, UV distortion or something like that, uh, the image would disappear. So we need some buffer room. So let's show you how I can create that. So with the padding, let's go ahead and we'll just say like five units and imposterize selected meshes here. And what you'll see is we get a new mesh, but this time we've got some extra buffer room in the alpha in comparison. So we've got you know, about five units here uh, on either side, on all sides of our mesh. So we can control that distance there.
The other thing we have, uh, again, is the two-sided quads, and also we can add some subdivisions. So if you're going to use some, instead of you know UV distortion, we could use some vertex distortion and have the, the grass wind blow uh, with that, and you need some extra vertices, we can have that automatically added as well. So here we have some subdivisions added, 5 and 5 on U and V. So we'll go ahead and imposterize that. So we also have padding on here as well. I could take that back out. But now we have some vertices here all modeled in already. And we have this mesh from our previously one with the default settings. So a few settings to uh, change things if you need them to give it a little bit more room around the mesh or give you some subdivisions. So the next thing to show is uh, normally we're going to have quite a few more types of grass blades. You're not just going to have one, you're going to have a handful on your texture. So let's go ahead and make those real quick. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one, come back, give it a little bit of padding, and we'll take out the subdivisions for now. So what I'm going to do, have these selected, go ahead and create an imposter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create four different versions and then we'll pack them all together. So we have version, let's just go ahead and say A, uh, we can take this, we'll, I'll just rotate these things around a bit, maybe cramp some in a little bit more so we have a thinner one. Posterize again. So now we have a second one. And create a few different variations here. Take these, angle them out a bit. And normally you would spend a bit more time with this, but I just want to create four different unique looking ones that we can then visually see how we can approach it. So here's another like tuft of grass. Posture I selected. So now this is our third, third one here. Let's move it off to the side. And for the last one, let's just go ahead and create a small little version. Some off to the side here. There we go. And we'll leave these ones out. So now we have four versions. Here we go. And now if we look at these, each one is on an individual UV sheet with an individual texture. That's not desirable. We want all of these to be on one single one. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is do, going to do material merge. So the other tab right next to imposterized is material merge. Let's go ahead and select that. I'm going to go ahead and use auto repack and it's going to repack our UVs. Uh, we can change our gutter size, shell rotation, I'm going to go ahead and say allow 90 degrees, so we get 90 degree rotations in there. And everything else looks good, so just can leave everything else default for here. Go ahead and merge these materials. Now we've got uh, a new version to each one of these. Uh, and if we look at it, we still have the old version with the full sheet. And if we select any of these, what you're going to see is we've got the now uh, all, all combined version and we have all four of these on one single texture sheet and you can see everything looks exactly the same there's no quality loss between any of this transfer between anything so again this is the back side of our model we don't have double sided on and so we're just seeing the dark shading back there so again that's the last thing we're going to show in this video is just the material merge so very quickly you can create a bunch of different variations from a high poly mesh uh, Give yourself some cards to work from. You have a lot of options in, in Posturize to add subdivisions or have the different uh, viewpoints. Also the double-sided quads, you know, if you want a double-sided grass and have two different looks for each one, uh, can add a lot of uh, extra look there. And you can go from there. So you have a lot of the options here to use billboards and material merge and bringing all these things down into one single simple texture instead of four multiple ones. And now we're just using two textures instead of the the uh, eight here. So thanks for taking the time to check out the imposterized tab inside of Instalod.